Welcome to Chemistry at York. This open educational resource is a joint production of the Department of Chemistry at York College and the Department of Natural Sciences at LaGuardia Community College of the City University of New York. This is Atomic Theory number four, a video entitled Periodic Table of the Elements. My name is Emmanuel Chang, and today we're going to learn some chemistry. Hi, my name is Kelly. I like to cook and martial arts. Hi, my name is Vimal, and I like video games. Hi, my name is Tessa, and I like carbon reactions. In the mid-1800s, a Russian scientist by the name of Dmitry Mendeleev, and other scientists as well, began to recognize repeating relationships in the properties of known elements. For example, when you arranged um, the elements in order of increasing atomic mass, you'll find that lithium, sodium, and potassium all have related properties. They're all soft metals that conduct heat and electricity they are very reactive, and they will also form strong bases. So when Mendeleev arranged the elements in order of increasing atomic mass, he found that lithium, sodium, potassium, other less well-known metals like rubidium and cesium, all had similar properties when they were lined up by order of increasing mass, in a table like this one. Remember that Mendeleev, working in the mid-1800s, this was after the proposal of atomic theory by John Dalton early in the 1800s, but before the discovery of protons, neutrons, and electrons around 1900, which, um, of course, protons give us atomic number. The periodic table that we know today is arranged by atomic number, but back uh, back then when Mendeleev was working, atomic number wasn't known. He used atomic mass, which is the next best thing. Another example of the repeating or periodic relationships are seen in this group of elements over here, known as the halogens. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, here abbreviated J instead of I, are elements that form acids in water. They react easily with other elements and they're readily available in nature. Because the table, which we now call the periodic table that Mendeleev proposed, um, referred to the properties of elements, mm, and that those properties uh, repeat in a regular fashion, Mendeleev predicted the existence of two elements that we now call gallium and germanium. Those elements at the time were not, uh, were not known and were in fact discovered a few years later with the very properties that he predicted. The modern periodic table looks like this. As we mentioned, the elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic number. And it's arranged, like Mendeleev's, into columns and rows. The columns we call groups, and the rows we call periods. There are 18 groups, one numbered 1 through 18, and periods 1 through 7, plus <clears throat> this little bit over here, um, which are actually not additional uh, periods. This row, this period, this row over here from 57 to 71 actually fits right here, 57 to 71. And this one over here, 89 to 103, fits right here, 89 to 103. They're just sort of <clears throat> um, taken out because otherwise the periodic table would be really, really wide. Periodic tables contain many types of 
information depending on who developed them or who published them and what their purpose in, is. In common chemistry textbooks, you'll have usually an atomic number, the symbol of the element, the average atomic mass, and sometimes also the name. And so you have atomic number one for H, which is hydrogen, and the average atomic mass 1.008 AMU. Other periodic tables will have other information such as common oxidation states, reactivity, mm, all sorts of periodic tables exist. Um, this one also has a color code. <clears throat> the background will tell you whether it's a metal, a metalloid, also sometimes called a semi-metal or a non-metal. And the color of the letters of the atomic symbol will tell you whether it's at room temperature most commonly a solid, liquid, or gas. Very briefly, metals are shiny, malleable, that means you can pound them into different shapes, and they're good conductors of heat and electricity. Nonmetals, in their pure form, generally appear dull and are poor conductors of heat and electricity. Metalloids, which are sometimes called semi-metals, conduct heat and electricity moderately well and possess some properties of metals and some properties of nonmetals. For example, silicon is a metalloid and is what is called a semiconductor. Conducts under some uh, circumstances, conducts elect electricity under some circumstances and not under others, and its properties are harnessed very often in computer chips. So, as we can see here, the elements here all contain a symbol, an atomic mass, an atomic number, and the name of the element. The so-called periodic law says the properties of elements are periodic functions of their atomic numbers. Right? And so all the elements in one group are going to have similar properties. The rows or groups in the periodic table um, are sometimes given a common historical names. For example, group one we mentioned earlier in this presentation are called the alkali metals. Group two are called the alkaline earth metals. Group 15, nictogens, 16, calcogens, 17, halogens, and 18, noble gases. This chunk that sits down here um, are called the transition metals. And groups 1, 2, and then 13 through 18 um, collectively are called the main group elements. The main group elements follow some very uh, particular rules that you'll learn about later in your general chemistry course and that we'll talk about further in further course uh, lectures in chemistry at York. The transition metals follow rules that are slightly different or less predictable. We also mentioned earlier these two rows that are taken out of the periodic table just for uh, aesthetic pur purposes, the lanthanides and the actinides. Lanthanides mm, coming from the name of the first element in the group, lanthanum, similarly for the actinides, actinium. So now let's see um, if we remember some things about the periodic table. We have here with us Emily. Say hi, Emily. Hi. Emily is, is a student at Herrick's Middle School and she will attempt to answer some questions about the periodic table. Emily, can you tell us what is the atomic number and the symbol and the name for the element in group 13 and period three. The atomic number is 13 and the element name is aluminum. The atomic symbol is Al. Very good, Emily. Emily, can you tell us the name, atomic number and symbol for the lightest 
halogen. The atomic number is 9, and the atomic symbol is F. And the atomic, oh, sorry, the name is fluorine. Thank you, Emily. Can you tell us the name, atomic number, and symbol of the alkali metal in period four? The name is calcium, um, and the atomic number, number is 20. The atomic symbol is Ca. Hmm, now let's think about that. We asked for the alkali metal with <clears throat> that was in period four. Now I think, Emily, you might have made a mistake. There's two groups, group one and group two, whose historical names have are quite similar. Group one is actually the alkali metals. Group two is the alkaline earth metals. So you gave us the name of the element in group two. We're actually looking at potassium, the alkali metal in group four, potassium K with an atomic number of 19. But that's okay, we're all learning. Can you give me the name, atomic number, and atomic symbol of the fourth member of the actinides? Neodymium, atomic number 60 and atomic symbol ND. Emily, I think you might have made another mistake. Because remember, the, the actinides are named the actinides because of their first member, actinium. I think you gave us the fourth member of the lanthanides. One, two, three, four, which is neodymium. The fourth member of the actinides, or would you like to try again? I would like to try again. Um, the element is uranium, atomic number 92, and atomic symbol U. That's correct. The fourth member of the actinides is uranium, atomic symbol U. And on that note, we would like to thank you for watching this presentation.